Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to return to outline renderers and implement a highly requested feature, per object outlines. Depending on your game, this feature might be more efficient than applying outlines to the entire screen, and it allows you to change outline colors on an object by object basis. I'll be working with the depth normal outlines from the previous outlines video. However, to avoid confusion, I'll set up the graph from scratch here as well. Still, I'd recommend you watch the entire tutorial series since I will not explain the underlying HLSL file or the algorithm in this video. I'll link to the series in the corner and the video description. Before I get started, I want to thank you all for watching my videos. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and enabling bell notifications. I do make weekly game development tutorials. I also want to plug our community Discord server. It's been getting pretty active, and it's a great place to chat about game development and get tutorial help. You can find an invite link in the video description. Alright, on to the tutorial. I made this using Unity 2020.2 and Universal Render Pipeline 10.2.2. If you're using a newer version, check the video description for updates. The project will work in 2020.1 as well, although your shader graph workflow will be a little different. So, in this series, we've implemented outlines based on color, depth, and normals, rendering them to textures, and running an edge detection algorithm over them to draw the outlines. Previously, we used a post-processing shader for this, but in this video, we'll bypass that step and run edge detection in the Mesh's material shader. For some platforms, this provides a significant performance boost, especially if relatively few objects are outlined. There's a few drawbacks. First, we can no longer support color outlines, since the camera color texture isn't ready when running Mesh material shaders. Second, it's exceedingly difficult to add these outlines to any shader graph using the lit master stack. I will provide a workaround, but more on that later. Let's get started by setting up the universal render pipeline. Download the package, create a settings asset, and set it as the active pipeline in the project settings. Reselect the universal render pipeline settings asset and enable the depth texture. Then, import the Depth Normals Renderer feature script, if you don't already have it. You can download it from the video description. Then, add a Depth Normals feature to your renderer settings. Now, let's create the Outlines graph. I think I'll make it a subgraph, so we can easily add it to any other graph in the future. Now, import and download the Outlines include.hlsl file and the decode depth normals.hlsl file. We went through these in detail in previous videos, but you can find them from the video description if you need them. Okay, open the outline subgraph. Let's recreate the Sobel edge detection algorithm from the previous video, except without color edges. Again, if you'd like more details, please watch the videos on color, depth, and depth normal outlines. First, we'll output the outline's opacity, a float. Now, I'm going to get the properties out of the way. We'll need a screen UV passed to us, which is the sample UV that we'll use for the depth and depth normal textures. Next comes outline thickness and the various fields used to fine tune the syllable outputs, including our tricks to avoid threshold artifacts. Once that's all set up, add custom functions to call depth syllable and normal syllable, feeding in the screen UVs and thickness. Now quickly return to the scene editor and create a syllable fine tuning subgraph. Inside, apply the threshold, tightening, and strength modifications to the syllable input. Save the asset, then return to the outlines graph. Add two fine tuning nodes, one for depth and one for normals. Input the appropriate syllable, tightening, and strength values. But remember the thresholds need a lot of tweaking. Let's tackle that now. First, depth. We need to increase the threshold if viewing the surface from an extremely narrow angle. Get the normal and view direction vectors and test if they're perpendicular. Two custom functions would calculate these vectors. One calls calculate depth normal and the other calls view direction from screen UV. Now recreate the algorithm to adjust the threshold based on the dot product of those vectors.
Remember that depth is stored logarithmically in the depth texture, meaning as the depth decreases, smaller changes are more significant. We can simply multiply the threshold by the current raw depth, so smaller depths have smaller thresholds, and feed that into the fine-tuning node. Now for the normal threshold. As you zoom away from an object, its normals will diverge quicker since there are less pixels to represent it. We need to increase the threshold if depth is larger. Remember to set the scene depth node to eye mode in order to get the depth in world units. After interpolating, feed the result into the syllable fine-tuning node. Finally, we can combine the depth and normal results by taking the maximum of them and send that to the output node. Okay, so let's test this out. Return to the scene editor and create an unlit graph. Open it. Add properties for all the various outline settings. This does seem tedious, but here's a tip. You can copy and paste settings between graphs. You might want to add outline to the beginning of all the property names for cleanliness though. Regardless, add a base color property and an outline color property. Now create an outlines node and input all of the needed fields. For the screen UV, we can use a screen position node set to default mode. Next, create a blend node in overwrite mode. This makes it work like alpha blending. The alpha here is the outlines output, so feed that into the opacity field. Set the base color as the base field and the outline color as the blend field. Then pass that result to the base color field of the master stack or, if you're using 2020.1, the albedo field of the unlit master node. Save the asset and return to the scene editor. Set up a test scene and create a material. Assign the material your test outlines graph, apply it to an object in the scene and adjust the properties as needed. You should adjust outline settings using the game view. Your outlines won't look the same in the scene view. You don't want to waste time doing it there. Okay, it looks good and no post-processing needed. Now, you can easily add outlines to any unlit graph by copying the appropriate nodes and properties over to it. Here are outlines applied to my Toon Shader graph. Now, if you try to do the same thing with a lit or PBR graph, the outlines will be shaded. It doesn't look horrible, but that's probably not the style you want. Unfortunately, it's not possible to completely fix this quirk in the shader graph, and it's even pretty difficult to do by modifying the default lit shader in code. The best solution is to use a render objects render a feature to draw these meshes again with a transparent outline only material. Let's write that transparent shader. Create a new unlit shader graph. In the graph inspector, set the surface type to transparent and the blend to alpha. Now add the outline properties as well as an outline color property. Set up an outline node again. Feed the output into the alpha node of the master stack, and the outline color into the base color node. Save the asset, and that's it. Back in the main Unity window, create a material for this transparent outline shader and fill out all the properties. In your project settings, navigate to tags and layers and name a layer outline. Then, select your URP renderer settings asset and add a render objects renderer feature. Set the event to After Rendering Opaques. Under Filters, set the layer mask to include your outlined layer. In Overrides, set the material to your transparent outlines material and set the pass index to zero. Now add an object to the outlines layer and it will render again using this outline shader. If you need different outline colors, you'll have to duplicate the entire process, creating another material, layer, and render objects render a feature for it. Now, I know you're thinking that this sounds really inefficient. It's true, this isn't ideal, but it's not much more costly than rendering one extra instance of the mesh. And you do still avoid post-processing. It's honestly the best solution I've found, unless you want to dig deep and recreate the lit shader yourself in code. One small tangent before I sign off. The Universal Render Pipeline version 10 includes a screen space ambient occlusion renderer feature with depth normals. Unfortunately, the way Unity has implemented this is not compatible with these outlines, so I recommend that you don't use them together. Perhaps, if there's interest, I'll follow up with a way to fix this issue, although it would probably involve writing our own ambient occlusion feature. 
Regardless, you now have individually rendered outlines. However, don't pack your bags just yet because I'm not done with this topic. In the next outline video, I'll optimize these outlines even farther, trying to eke out a few more frames per second for lightweight platforms. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss that video. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it if you like this video. It lets YouTube know that it should recommend it to others and it really helps out the channel. Of course, please leave a comment if you have any questions. How do you want to use outlines in your project? Is there another topic you'd like to see me make a tutorial about? Thanks again for watching and make games.